you. Well, Jensen, thank you for joining us. I uh, count myself among your fanboys. Um, just gonna share a story. So I met Jensen in 2017. Uh, I was CFO of a bank, as it turns out, and for whatever reason, this bank was bringing the board of directors by NVIDIA. And I don't know if you even remember, Jensen, but in the room, there were these huge monitors. Usually when there's a, there are bankers in a boardroom during a board meeting, something bad is happening. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what was I don't remember, 2017? 2017. No, it was just a, it was a demo more than anything else. You had these big monitors up in the room, and I noticed that there was a very beautiful person on the monitor, and then about 30 seconds later, there was another beautiful person, and it just kept going like this. And then at the end, you said, oh, none of those people actually exist. Yeah, right. They're being generated by AI. Yeah. And for me, it had a big effect because I was so passionate about AI. I went to an AI and medicine program in the 90s and then really gave up because AI was going nowhere. And that's how I ended up on Wall Street and was there for a long time. And then suddenly in your I, I really office, hope it's different this time. Yeah, and then in your office, I, I saw, wow, things have really progressed, yeah. right, since that time. Yeah. And uh, so I had gotten out of healthcare, and now I'm coming back to my roots. Yeah. And I think you, at about the same time, started NVIDIA that I went to Wall Street. When did you start? 93. 93. Yeah. And so what brought you back to, uh, to healthcare? Can you talk about yeah, that sure, journey? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, first, first of all, 2017, I, I think it's really, really instructive to just reflect quickly on that, that moment, but in the context of what happened starting in 2012. Uh, you guys, uh, everybody knows is well documented. Uh, Alex, Alex's uh, model, Alex Net, and his partner uh, Ilya Suskover and uh, their their advisor Hinton uh, came up with Alex Net and it was able to achieve computer vision capabilities uh, with with uh, uh, no specific human engineered algorithms uh, for uh, object recognition, computer vision, and recognizing objects. Uh, is a is a first step in in some capability of, of intelligence, and so it's really important in, in artificial intelligence perception and perception in general. But 2012 uh, happened uh, shortly after we achieved um, uh, superhuman speech recognition, superhuman uh, uh, object recognition, and then and then um, uh, then went kind of quiet. You guys probably uh, this is kind of 2015 ish. Yeah. Uh, it went kind of quiet. 2018 comes along. Uh, you saw the first version of NVIDIA's work in generative GANs. Uh, Ian, Ian uh, Goodfellow invented GANs, uh, but we really took it, we elevated it to a, a great new level. We, con we were able to control GANs, uh, meaning that we could say generate just nothing but human faces, or we could generate um, uh, mountains, lakes, uh, oceans, trees, clouds, compose them all together into a scene. Uh, so we we worked on uh, what was what what is the first first indications of generative AI, and that came out in this model and it got, uh, triggered a lot of excitement. It's called Galgan. Uh, shortly after that, Transformers was invented, uh, yep. BERT was uh, created, and then GPT came along in 2018. So 2018, if you go back in time, 2018 is as big of a deal as 2012, about six years time. About six years time, about five year, five six years time. Well, uh, it's now four, five, six years uh, after that, mm -hmm. and we've now uh, unified unified uh, the ability to uh, both uh, understand the language, recognize patterns of very very long sequences and very large uh, dimensionality, and uh, uh, understand and learn the representations of them, learn the language of just about all kinds of information. And because we understand all the information, uh, uh, we can also uh, generate information from that. So we can now translate from text to text, text to image, image to text. Image to text would be captioning. Uh, text to image would be image generation. Um, uh, text to proteins would be properties to proteins. Um, uh, amino acids uh, to protein would be uh, structure generation, <laughs> so on and so forth. And so 
So if you just generalized what we have now achieved generally, just, just take a step back and say, what, what is a computer able to do now? It can now, rec it can now recognize and learn the language of almost anything with structure, and it can translate it to anything with structure. And so tags, protein, protein, tags, amino acid, protein, so on and so forth. And so this is where we are now. This is the generative AI revolution. And, um, I, and so, so the, the time, uh, I'm, I'm just super excited to be here. First of all, uh, this is not my normal crowd. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> biologists and scientists and you use things like you, you it's such an angry crowd first can, nah. so can I first can I first just like usually when we think about things we think about you know creation and and we, we would like to be able to improve and accelerate or um, you, you you use words like target yeah. <laughs> Um, inhibit. You know the list of words that you guys use are just generally angry, and and so anyways, anyways, you're not my normal crowd. My normal crowd are the creators, designers, they're artists. You know, they're they're people who are just generally happier. <laughs> um, <laughs> but <laughs> you're really onto something that me? here. Was Jeff. that me? I, th I think I I don't think so. I. You guys are just in it so off. You guys are in it so much. You just angry people with other angry people. You just before you know it, you don't even realize you're angry. <laughs> you're doing it for a good cause, but yeah, you're, you're you're doing it in a really angry way. And so, so anyways, I, I just you said you said that moment. I just wanted to reflect reflect on it for all of us. Uh, we are at that moment in computer science. We are at that moment in information science. Let me give you one example of just the, 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 the magic of it, okay? This is just, just the extraordinary part of it. Let's, let's say video conferencing. Let's just apply some random example, video conferencing. In the past, we would take a camera, we would encode, we would literally take every single pixel, uh, we would find the entropy in it, and we would encode it, and we would send the encoded video on the other side, we would decode it. And the data rate, the data rate is a few megabits per second. Is that right? Yeah. A few megabits per second. It could be 10 megabits per second or something like that. And, and the compression ratio is incredible. It's like 50 to 1. We're, so in, we're amazed by it, video, conf, video conferencing. Uh, it was invented by AT&T in uh, 1964. 1964, as it turns out, to a, a very important year in the world. Uh, it, a year after I was born, it was the year that the world that uh, invented the IBM System 360. Uh, computer science has largely remained the same since then. Yeah. Uh, AT&T came out with the video conferencing system, and it's largely been the same since. Let's pretend for a second that video conferencing system now looks like this. So I go home, and my wife says, you know, Lori goes, how's your day? Uh, and uh, uh, did you, did you uh, add value today? That's the first two questions. <laughs> Okay, first two questions. First two questions, did you add value today? What's your hit rate? <laughs> and largely, largely what I say, fine, I did no harm. Uh, that's 99% of the time. Sometimes I say, I had, you know, I saved the company. And, and, so, and, and sometimes it's true, sometimes it's true. For example, Tuesday. Um, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> uh, and, and sometimes I exaggerate, I saved the company, but that's not true. But if, it made her felt good. It's poetic. And so she, yeah, oh, and she'll say, thank goodness, feed the dog. Yeah. And, so, and so she'll say something like, what happened today? And I'll, I'll say, I'll say like, I gave, I gave a talk. Uh, Martin and I uh, gave a fireside chat. Uh, there were a few hundred people in the room, and um, uh, it was raining, uh, and, and uh, uh, it, it was leaking. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and notice, in just a few words, the compression ratio is kilobytes, but she had reimagined that entire scene. Mm -hmm. In the future, video conference is going to be like this. It's going to take a picture. That picture is going to be a picture of our face, and then after that, it will, it's, it's perceived it. After that, it will reanimate it on the other side, reimagine it on the other side. The compression ratio is going to be like a million to one. Mm -hmm. We are going to use artificial intelligence to exceed this limit in information theory called Shannon's theory. Mm. The Shannon's limit of information theory will be exceeded. Now, how is it possible we exceeded information? Because we have priors. 
we have priors. We recognize what a person looks like. Yeah. We recognize what happens. We generally understand what happens when they're animating their face. We could reconstruct it on the other side. And so, so now the, the inverted problem for all of, you, all of you scientists in the room is, in the absence of information, how do we go find information? In the absence, noisy data, in the absence of such low data rate, how do we find insight? How do we find data? How do we find the, the embedded uh, data that we need, the information that we need? Well, the reason for that, the reason you're able to exceed what your common sense says is because there are so many other modalities of information, we call them priors. Mm -hmm. And so multi-modality, uh, I heard multi-modality probably more often in this, this today, today's uh, in several of my meetings, than just about in any circumstance. And, and, the, and I'm just super excited for all of you. Multi-modality language models, foundation models, are clearly doable today. We know how to do it. Um, uh, it embeds a lot of priors uh, and, uh, uh, and, and the auxiliary information that you're gonna bring from all these different modalities is gonna give you insight like you can't believe. And so it just applied this, this concept of the video conferencing I just described. Uh, and in fact, today, uh, you could use uh, an AI model from NVIDIA, it's called audio to face You apply it to a picture, uh, we call it live portrait, and literally from the voice that is being transmitted, and voice encoding is very high, and the amount of data is you know, very low, and from the voice and the words that are spoken, we can animate a face, and it looks just perfect. It looks just perfect. And so you can have a video conference with not just you know, a few kilobytes. Wow. So you can go, you could, you could transmit enormous amounts of information with just very little amounts of data. And we're in that era. Uh, your question was, was uh, uh, biology. Did you know, how did we get involved? Yeah. Well, this yeah. was 19. Uh, we invented this computing model called accelerated computing. And um, there were several, there were several uh, events that and we invented this thing. And I had no idea whether it was going to be useful. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of the, the, usually you have an intuition about why it's going to be useful, but you're not exactly sure. So we invented it. Two events happened that gave me a great deal of confidence. Two things, and they were both in biology. And so uh, two, uh, two researchers at Mass General uh, uh, saw the work that we did, and they applied it to uh, CT reconstruction, inverse physics, inverse, inverse, inverse uh, image processing, basically. A CT reconstruction, and I saw their paper. Uh, and I, I try to, you know, even though I, I probably have better things to do, but, but I, enjoy, I enjoyed reading some of the papers that, that are published. And, and I noticed that they used our, our, our GPUs, which is designed for playing video games, for, uh, for CT reconstruction. I was so excited by mm -hmm. that. And uh, uh, um, uh, we flew out to go see them. And, and I, I kind of remember them saying, you know, why are you here? <laughs> and I said, well, I want to see what you guys are doing with these GPUs and how are you using it for inverse, you know, uh, CT reconstruction. And, he goes, and they said, they said uh, we've never had a chip exec come and see us before. And I just want you to know that if your trip was incredibly successful, we would buy two GPUs. <laughs> and I, said, <laughs> I said, well, that's totally worth it. That was, that was the first, and the second time, the second time was around, this is the, the, the when, in, when CUDA was invented, uh, was, uh, was uh, UIUC, uh, where they used um, uh, our GPUs for molecular dynamics. Okay. And, and it, get, it, it opened my mind towards, hey, look, we could apply the same methodology that we use in designing chips, computer-aided chip design. We might be able to help the world of drug discovery go from drug discovery, computer-aided drug discovery, to computer-aided drug design. Mm. And this is now about, I guess, about 15 years ago. And when I saw <coughs> NAMD and you know, all of your molecular dynamic simulation, I said, hey, if we scale this up by a billion times, we could like simulate biology. And, and <laughs> I was so enthusiastic about it. And I, I said, how hard could this be? <coughs> It turns out it's way harder than I thought, but it got me into the journey. How many and years of Moore's law is that? About thirty? Or? Well, in the in that time, in that time, we've advanced computing now by uh, a billion times. Yeah. Yeah, fifteen years, a billion times, 
and we're still a billion times away. And so, but, but the thing is, the fact that we're only a billion times away says it's close. Right. It's very close. And, and this is a big deal. It's a very big deal. But, but I think that the, uh, maybe the, 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 the important message is, is um, uh, it didn't take much to get, get me excited about it uh, because we had, I think it was Aviv that she was saying something about you saw success somewhere else and you liked, you, you liked the smell of that success and you want to you wanna apply it to uh, something, something that you're working on. Uh, I had the benefit of growing up in, the, in one computer revolution. That was my entire career is defined by electronic design automation. And we, we made my generation, before my generation, my boss, spent all of his time, uh, his name is Mark Allen, uh, and, and he, uh, he spent all of his time in a lab. I was the first generation that spent less time in a lab. Our engineers today never goes to the lab. Their entire reality is, in a, is completely in simulation. Mm -hmm. And we build giant, incredible systems, you guys. Uh, it takes 20,000 engineering years to build one generation of our systems. And when that system, they tell me, it's, we call it tape out. When that system is ready for tape out, when I press that button, it is a, first of all, a $500 million button. Wow. And, and, and I launch, I kick off $5 billion worth of engineering, subsequent engineering. And I press it, and I know it's perfect. I know it's perfect. It better be perfect, because otherwise. And so I know it's perfect. <laughs> I know it's perfect because if it's not, we're in trouble. <laughs> and, and, and so we, we literally prefetch all of the experimentation, all the complex experimentation of the future and bring it all into in silico. Now we couldn't have done that in, in one step, mm. but it took us 40 years to get here. I have every confidence this is gonna happen here. Now it's 40 years after our journey 40 years after our journey, which is basically about a trillion times more computing capability necessary to do what you need to do. But over the course of the next 40 years, or, you know, I think over the course of the next 10 years, frankly, um, almost everything will largely start in, in silico, largely end in, in silico, and, and, um, and I'm hoping that computer-aided drug design will be the way we talk about it. So, so Jensen, on that point, uh, of course I share that view, but Questions very much on my mind, I think many of the people here. And I'll just say there's two extremes, and these are caricatures. But one extreme is we've got a lot of data about human biology. It might be in disparate places and non-standard forms, hard to corral, but there's a ton of data. We have all the data we need, and now we just need really great algorithms and LLMs, and they're going to train on all that data, and then we're going to learn all of human biology. That's one extreme. The other extreme is we don't have anywhere near the right amount of curated, reliable, reproducible data, and we've got to do millions, maybe billions of experiments, highly reproducible, to get that data. And this is, as you know, something Recursion's working on. So do we have enough data for the LOMs to just deduce biology? Uh, probably not, and it doesn't even matter if it's true it, that, we, that we know that there is enough data. If you told me that the world has enough data, I will still do what recursion is doing, systematically create data so that we can um, learn what we need to learn in a systematic way. That's called the engineering method. Sure. The engineering method suggests that, that there's, a, there's a structured process, a repeatable process. Um, we, augment it, we augment it with domain randomization. But we don't start our life in domain randomization. We don't start our life by, by, uni by wandering around the universe um, exhaustively. Mm. And, and so, so I do think that, that you'll just, you, you're gonna do all of it. You're gonna do uh, systematic uh, data generation. Uh, you're gonna do synthetic data generation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you're going to, uh, 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 you know, of course, learn from all of the data available in the world. And you're gonna connect a, fly, a flywheel together uh, that allows you to uh, learn from reinforcement learning and other methods. And so uh, I think the answer is yes in all of those cases. Mm -hmm. But the one case that, that 
if I were to start from nothing, I would do it the way recursion does it. The systematic way of generating, uh, uh, I, I think it's an excellent method, which is the reason why we're, we're an investor. I think it's a smart approach. And so that means it's probably a while before we can be like your engineers operating entirely in silico. Well, we, we, in, we operate entirely in silico, but um, we design it completely in silico, simulate. We simulate in multiple levels. Uh, transistor level, which is physics, physics level, is like close to, it's not quite, uh, uh, not quite Schrodinger's equations, but, um, uh, but electromagnetics equations. Okay, so principal simulations, you can't, you can't scale that up very far. Uh, logical simulations, timing simulations, functional simulations, behavioral simulations. Look at how many abstractions I've already captured. Uh, <coughs> system level emulation. And then we do all of that connected together. When we tape out, then we have a prototype. That prototype, we gotta bring it up in the lab. That's, and so, uh, and whenever we make a mistake, uh, the, more, the, more, the more launches, rocket launches we do, the better we're gonna be as a company, and so we launch a lot of rockets. Uh, every time we launch the rocket, we learn something new, even though uh, the chip is good enough for, you know, for production. Uh, it, there are probably some areas that are slightly different than our expectation. We take that, put it back into the model so that the next chip improves from that. And so, so I, I think our, our methodology of designing chips is not unlike Recursion's methodology of designing drugs and discovering drugs. Um, uh, we just had the benefit of, of having a simpler problem, a far simpler problem. For example, here, here's something that we have the advantage of that you don't. Uh, if we don't understand a transistor very well, we make the transistor different. That's cheating. <laughs> Would you guys agree? Like, for example, if you don't understand a protein very well, you don't get to make it different. No. So we go, hey, you know what? The simulation capability of our, of our company is not at the limits of the size of the transistor or the shape or whatever. Let's just change the shape. Mm -hmm. let's, let's design the transistor so that we can understand it. It's not like the human body is going to shape itself so that you can understand it. And so you have a much harder problem. You're we, also we not regulated the same way. What's that? You're also not regulated the same way. <laughs> all true, all true, <laughs> all true. Anyhow, anyhow, you have a much, a much harder problem. Uh, but, but one of the, the advantages is that it's now 40 years after our starting point and the technology that, that, um, uh, that's available is, is, is genuinely miraculous. And if, uh, if you haven't had a chance to engage the technology, please do. And the, 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 the attitude that I would use, um, uh, if, you, if, you, if you wouldn't mind me just saying so, is the same attitude that I approached uh, the, the, the coming into this industry is, how hard could it be? <laughs> and it, it, it turns out it's much harder than you think, right. but at least it gets you on the journey. That's probably the, the wisdom. So, so Jensen, stepping back, how do you see the role of, of, of huge technology companies such as yours in pharmaceuticals and biopharma? Are you, are you providing tools like, like Levi's and pickaxes, or do you think that it evolves in a different direction from that? I'm hoping, hoping, uh, dear God, we end up better than Levi's. Uh, I, I'm sure they're, they're great. Are they still around? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> right when here I, in San Francisco. When, when I was in college, <laughs> when I was in college, I went, I went to school when I was 16, and, uh, and, and I, I had five pairs of Levi's 501s. Sure. I had no socks. Uh, my mom didn't, didn't pack me with any socks. 501s. Mm -mm. Uh, anyways, I, I haven't seen 501s. Are, are they still around? I don't. They, know. I don't okay. I don't know. <laughs> so so uh, I hope we're going to be around in four years. Uh, our contribution is this: three layers. The first layer is is if you are doing if you if you want to simulate uh, if you want to do your drug design and drug discovery in silico, it is very likely that you have to process an enormous amount of data. It's likely it's multi multimodal. It's likely that it's very, very long sequence longitudinal. Um, it is very, it is likely uh, going to uh, require state-of-the-art AI models. Uh, there are several ways that we can help you and we can partner with you. One is the computing platform. Second is the algorithm, the mathematics that are sitting on top of these uh, computing platforms. We're quite special at that. We're very good at that. 
Um, and so this area, and then the third, of course, uh, you know, we, we're, we are, we are uh, enthusiastic, uh, we're passionate, and um, uh, we are determined uh, to work with you to advance this field. We believe in this. Uh, very, very few companies can say that they believed in this from the very beginning, mm -hmm. and we're you know, still here 15 years later uh, working with all of you. And so we, we deeply believe that this is going to be the future of the way that drugs will be discovered and designed. And so, so there's, a, there's several things that we can offer. And of course, uh, we're also uh, fairly adept investors. And so uh, we would love to invest in, in uh, amazing companies like Recursion. Uh, and there are several other amazing companies that we've invested in the audience. And, and so, so uh, I, we'd love to partner with you to uh, create this future together. So we can work with you in a whole lot of different levels. And you know, you know, please, if you have a hard time with computation or artificial intelligence, you know, uh, just send us an email. We're here for you. I think there's so much to learn from NVIDIA on computer-aided design. Right? There's got to be so many analogies there. I wonder yeah. if some of those simulations. If you look at our, it. if you look at our pipeline in Clara, from uh, cryo-electron microscopy to X-ray crystallography to, um, uh, 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 you know, gene sequencing to uh, amino acid to uh, structure prediction, uh, all the way to virtual screening of just about every single algorithm you can imagine. Uh, first of all, I don't mean to show off, but what other chip CEO would talk like that? <laughs> Can't Come think on. of any, Jensen. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's nasty talk. <laughs> that is nasty talk. You know, in our industry, it was just like, blah, 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 blah. And right here, everybody goes, I know exactly what you're talking about. And so, so, um, <laughs> and so uh, uh, along the entire pipeline um, uh, of the discovery of, of, uh, of, of drugs and medicine, uh, we, we, are, we have algorithms and we have mathematics and we have ex expertise that we can be a uh, partner to you. Okay, so, so please do reach out to us and, and we'd love to be of service to you. So I cannot let you off the stage without asking for some predictions. And how about this? I will, I will allow you to choose the time frame of your prediction, uh, but maybe something short term, like this year more or less, and something a few years out. Um, so, so short term, short term it, one, of the, one of the observations that, that everybody's going to realize is that artificial intelligence sounds complicated, but it's supposed to make computers easier to use. Mm. The single greatest contribution we have made to society is that we finally made it possible so that all of our children don't have to learn C++. Yay! <laughs> what a ridiculous idea. A nightmare. <laughs> there was a time, you guys know, there was a time when tech CEOs were, oh yeah, in the future, everybody should learn how to program. And I was thinking, I don't want anybody to program. Right. Why, why is everybody programming a computer? It makes no sense. The computer should do what you intend it to do. And so um, we, have, we have, for the first time, because of artificial intelligence and the, work that, the groundbreaking work that our industry has now done, we have closed the technology divide in a dramatic way. Everybody's a programmer. And the programming language of the future is called human. You could talk to it. You could have incomplete sentences. It could be half with gesture. You could be Italian and program a computer. You could, you could be <laughs> German, French, and Italians, and Americans can equally program computers. And, and because the computer is multimodal and understands your intention and understand waves and gestures and things like that. And so, so I, I think this is our great contribution. What does that mean to you? It means that for the very first time, our computers and the power of a computer is much, much easier to access than ever in history. You just have to engage it. Go take a step. I believe that this year, um, every industry will become a technology industry. The, the beginning of a journey of a technology industry. Let me tell you what it means to, to be a technology industry. Um, you guys know there's a fundamental difference between selling a phone and building and merchant uh, and selling iPhones. One of them selling a phone is Neanderthals. iPhone is a technology industry. And the reason for that is because it's software defined and that device, that device 
um, uh, offers a platform by which uh, Apple can continue to offer services and, and goodness and joy and all of those things to the world for a very, very long time. Well, uh, you could, you're now seeing this, the fundamental difference between Tesla, the car company, and you know, other companies, uh, car companies. One of them is building a thing, and one of them is building technology. I fundamentally believe your industry is going to get revolutionized because of your transformation to become software designed, software driven, and artificial intelligence driven. That is going to revolutionize your industry. A medical instrument is never going to be the same again. Ultrasound systems, CT systems, you name it, all kinds of instruments, they're always going to be a device plus a whole bunch of AIs. And so uh, all the modern uh, uh, tech bio companies are starting to think in this way. And I think that, that, that the value that you'll create, um, uh, the, the opportunities you'll create, uh, are, are going to be incredible. And so I, I, I think this is going to be one of the world's great future industries. It's going to be a technology industry. And uh, we're, you know, we're here to serve you. My last question. I have two young kids, seven and nine. I do not want them to be programmers in the way I was a programmer. But they should play video games. Uh, well, they certainly do that. And I do, I, I wonder, wonder what you think about this. I do tell them, I do think you need to know about the algorithmic data-driven approach to problem solving. Yeah. I think we still need to know that, even in the age of AI. What do you say? I love it. Uh, Marty, I, I think that everybody should learn philosophy 101, which is basically logic. Mm -hmm. and, and philosophy 101, which is basically logic, is the, is the foundations of programming. Right. So go learn that. Yes. And, and that, that is, is ample, ample. Um, uh, please learn algebra, you know? That, that's, <laughs> How about linear algebra? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I would push them until they get to calculus. But, but you know, differential equations, you know, I, I don't know. You know but shouldn't surf, everybody surface. learn linear algebra, though? Yeah, 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 you know, multivariable systems is good to, to be able to command, but, but, you know, you got an AI to do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's okay. I, I think that anybody who could, who could solve, um, here we go. You just have to, you have to learn how to do this. Suppose you have a wedding party of 300 people. Uh, how would you seat these 300 people in tables of 12 so that everybody would have a harmonious and happy dinner? As you go, <laughs> as you know, the combinations are more than the number of atoms in the universe and that this is a problem only a mother-in-law can solve. <laughs> and we do not need a quantum computer. You see? So, there, so whatever it is that they use to solve this problem, go learn that. Okay. <laughs> On that note, Jensen, thank you so much. <laughs>